to the news as brought to you on the Anglican Cable Network Nigeria, ACNN. I am Ngozi Adibe. The Vice Chancellor of Ajayi Crowder University and Bishop Theologian of the Church of Nigeria Anglican Communion, the Right Reverend Professor Dakwa Asaju, has urged Nigerians to do everything to prevent war in the nation because, according to him, the people who are exploiting citizens of the country are the ones who would still lead the nation into the sea. He said this during an interview with the ACNN crew who visited the school. Professor Asadju said that if somebody like the chief of army staff can be announcing that there are rumors of intended coup, then the nation has a serious problem of unity. Thus, he urged Nigerians to strive to make sure Nigeria remains one and called on the government to first deal with the principal issues of Nigeria's existence and the terms of her existence. The first thing, let us try to make sure that Nigeria remains one. That's the primary thing now, that we will remain one. You can imagine when people have the, if somebody like the chief of army staff could be announcing that there are rumors of intended coup, then we have a serious problem of unity. Let's deal with the principal issues of our existence and the terms of existence, whether we remain as a nation or not. Let's do everything to prevent us going to war because we cannot, we cannot, these people who are exploiting us are the ones who are going to lead us into this evil. So let us try to prevent this by managing the incompetences, managing the problems we have until we organize ourselves to replace them. Bishop Ashadu challenged Nigerians to prevent this constant exploitation of Nigeria and her citizens by its leaders through managing the incompetence and managing the problems plaguing the nation until the masses can organize themselves to replace them. He, however, questioned whether the masses were ready to replace incompetent leaders because, according to him, 2019 is around the corner and yet those talking are the same politicians who have been in power and not men of ideas who can get the country out of its struggles. But are we really on the way to replacing them? 2013 is around the corner. Who is talking? It's not the same politicians. Those who are men of ideas who can get us out, they are not talking. They are not forming themselves into political parties. So how do you want to wrest power from them? We continue to, to wander around in the wilderness. One day we will get to the promised land. Still on the unity of the Nigerian nation, Catholic Archbishop of Lagos, His Grace Most Reverend Dr. Alfred Adewale Martins, has added his voice to the call to maintain one Nigeria. He said that Nigerians stand to gain more living together, hence they must shun every act capable of further polarizing the country. The prelate, while expressing deep concern over the discordant tunes and call for disintegration being championed by some youths across the country, warned of the consequences of another civil war. According to him, the recent directive by the Arewa youths for the Igbo to leave the north on or before October 1, 2017 was unacceptable and capable of further deepening the schisms being experienced across the country. He urged the federal government to do everything possible to find a lasting solution to the genuine agitations of the various ethnic groups in the country in order to give everyone a sense of belonging. The Bishop of the Anglican Diocese of Okigwe South, the Right Reverend David Onoaha, has advised the federal government to dialogue with groups associated with the agitation for the Biafran project. He said this will enable the government to understand why, after 47 years of the end of the civil war, the idea and clamor for the state of Biafra seem to be gaining fresh momentum. Delivering his 92-page Bishop's Charge at the third session of the 8th Synod of the Diocese, held at St. Stephen's Church, Umuduri Ekwele, Ehime Mbano, local government area of Imo State, the bishop further opined that it would be a better approach to take steps to address the obvious injustice, marginalization, suffering, and hardship the Southeast geopolitical zone has been subjected to since after the civil war. While condemning the brutality with which the law enforcement agencies adopt at demonstrations and activities of the group, he maintained that violence was not a solution to the problem noting that all over the world, force has no place in winning ideological wars. Speaking on the theme for the Synod, sowing and reaping, the law for all time, Bishop Onoa had commended the federal government on the sustained war against corruption, despite obvious challenges and inadequacies, noting that the introduction of the Treasury single account and the whistleblowing was rubbing off positively on attaining desired goals. 
He gave kudos to the federal government for the huge success already achieved against insurgency in the Northeast, but expressed worry that no visible effort was being made to disarm those terrorists under the cover of headsmen. On the issues bordering on Imo State, the bishop decried the lack of transparency and accountability in the government and urged the lawmakers to come out of their seclusion in order to face the challenges of ensuring good governance in the state. The Anglican Bishop of Ebu Diocese, the Right Reverend Geoffrey Okurafo, has urged state governments to offset all backlog of salaries and allowances owed their workers and pensioners. Bishop Okurafo, who gave the advice during a Eucharistic service of confirmation, admission and induction for Emekuku Parish at St. Stephen's Church, Emekuku, in a very not local government area of Imo State, said it was appalling that only nine states of the Federation could boast of full payment of salaries to its workers. He wondered aloud if democracy in Nigeria was stable enough in spite of being uninterrupted these 18 years when civil servants were being owed salaries and pensioners their due entitlements. He stressed that it was against the ethics of both international and labor law to all workers insisting that laborers were entitled to their wages. Therefore, he called on the state government, still owing their workers and pensioners, to rise up to the challenge, ensuring that they paid up every outstanding salaries and pensions. A cleric has reiterated that the Nigerian nation is endowed with stupendous natural mineral resources that if skillfully extracted and money realized is judiciously spent, Nigeria will be one of the richest countries in the world that will be lending and not carrying the burden of loans on its neck. This submission was made by the Right Reverend Dr. Abraham Akin Lalu, Bishop of Okeoshu Anglican Diocese, while delivering his charge to the first session of the Ninth Synod of the Diocese, held at St. Barnabas Anglican Church, Akpomu, in Oshun State. Bishop Akin Lalu appealed to those in charge of the collection of the ill-gotten wealth to do something remarkable with the loot and the culprits brought to book. He urged every citizen of the country to work together, cooperating with the government of the day to move the country forward in commerce and industry. He called on the federal government to make definite laws and regulation on cattle ranching, instead of waiting dangerously until there is pandemonium in the 36 states of the federation, including the FCT. He said the way the cattle areas are invading the states in the country is alarming and needs urgent attention. According to him, it's an ill wind that will blow no good. Hence, the federal government should not fold its arms. Speaking on the theme for the Synod, the Bishop of Okeosho Diocese said the faith and belief of many people are superficial and very far from being genuine. Hence, they receive the good news of Christ as secondhand. According to him, Nigerians like secondhand materials, and to them, everything is Tokumbo, including their faith. He said Tokumbo faith cannot be steadfast but slippery. It cannot be immovable, but runs after wealth and worldly desires. Bishop Akin Lalu concluded that the good news should not be confined, but shared with others. After the break, federal government reacts to news on removal of Christian religious knowledge from secondary school curriculum. Please stay with us. Ajayi Crowther University admission for the 2017-2018 academic session has commenced. Programs on offer include undergraduate, postgraduate, part-time, HND conversion, foundation and pre-degree in faculties of law, humanities, natural sciences, social sciences and management sciences. Our tuition is affordable and payable in three installments. Visit the university website at www.acu.edu.ng for online application, screening and admission letter. Given our state-of-the-art facilities, well-equipped library, decent learning environment, and distinguished lecturers, apply now by logging on to www.acu.edu.ng. For details, call 0814-592-0637 or 0810-440-8768. Ajayi Krava University, raising godly intellectuals. Welcome back to the news as brought to you on the Anglican Cable Network Nigeria. We encourage you to follow us on our social media platforms for our interesting programs and activities. Search and like us on Facebook, follow us on Twitter and subscribe to our YouTube channel at ACNN TV. For inquiries and suggestions, write to acnntv at gmail.com 
or our WhatsApp number all showing on your screen. You can also be part of our news crew by sending us stories and pictures of events happening in your local church or diocese and we promise to use them. The 2017 Mothers Union and Women's Guild Conference of the Diocese of Lokoja, Lokoja Province started with a Eucharistic service at Christ Anglican Church Lokoja. The preacher at the opening service, Reverend Aime, a priest at St. Philip's Anglican Church, Gadumo Lokoja, who spoke on the theme, Obedience is Better Than Sacrifice, defined obedience as a submissive behavior to one another. He said that God does not require the sacrifices of Christians whose obedience is in doubt. Therefore, he encouraged women to be obedient to God, their husbands, and all constituted authorities because disobedience leads to broken homes. Also speaking on the theme, the Reverend Canon Metzeru, the 2017 guest preacher, who is the supervising priest of Basa East Agdikenri, Lokoja Diocese, defined obedience as dependent trust in God and sacrifice as giving something valuable to someone else or for something else. He stressed that sacrifice is not a bribe and must not be seen as such, pointing out that Saul failed God's test on his obedience. He defined disobedience as doing one's own will and ignoring God's directives, adding that God hates disobedience because it is likened to divination and idolatry. He highlighted the consequences of disobedience as rejection by God, death, emptiness, replacement, and fear, and the benefits of obedience as longevity of life, peace of mind, and security, divine provision, and favor, concluding that one must be in Christ so that his grace and spirit will help one to be obedient. In her address, the president of the Mothers Union and Women's Guild, Dallas of Lokoja, Mrs. Abiodu Egbunu further defined obedience as a human and animal behavior and a form of social influence in which a person yields to explicit instructions or orders from an authority figure determined by prestige or the appearance of power. She enumerated four factors that influence obedience as one's knowledge of God, seeking God with one's whole heart, returning to the Lord, and seeking first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. She concluded the charge by enjoining all to leave the conference with the conviction to obey God unconditionally and to believe in the Lord Jesus Christ. Meanwhile, at the Thanksgiving service held to mark the end of the conference, His Grace the Most Reverend Emmanuel Ibunu, the Archbishop of Lokoja Province and Bishop of Lokoja Diocese, stated that a person's intimacy and constant obedience to God shows how much that person knows him adding that one's knowledge of God reflects in how one worships him, especially through giving, which is an act of worship. He concluded the sermon by emphatically stating that obedience to God must be total because there is nothing like partial obedience. At Bishop Egbunu stressed that one must never replace obedience with sacrifice because even though obedience involves sacrifice, obedience is more important. This year's conference featured seminars with the topics learning and service, opportunity in the church, and creating opportunities for the kingdom in your workplace. High points of the 2017 Mothers Union and Women's Guild Conference of the Diocese of Lokoja include workshops on cooking, prayers, health talks on breastfeeding, care of the eyes, ear and body, hypertension and arthritis, group Bible studies, drama, quiz competition, morning devotions and the investiture of the profile mother, Honorable Mrs. Omolara Obayemi. The Federal Ministry of Education has debunked reports that Christian religious knowledge, CRK, has been removed as a subject of study from the curriculum of public secondary schools in Nigeria, while Islamic Religious Studies, IRS, has been reintroduced. Debunking the report's director of press, Federal Ministry of Education, Mrs. Chinenye Ihuoma pointed out that the ministry has designed a new subject which merged civic education, IRS, CRK, and social studies into religion and national values, though they are to be taught separately. Mrs. Ihuoma told reporters that the alteration is not from the minister, but purely from the National Council on Education. She said that just like the council had said that history should be a subject of its own at the basic level in the first nine years, a new subject has been introduced called religion and national values, which is a fusion of religion and civics. 
the Executive Secretary of the Nigerian Educational Research and Development Council, NERDC, Professor Jinaidu, also corroborated that the claims peddled on social media platforms and a national daily that Christian religious knowledge has been removed from school's curriculum as speculative, false and unfounded, specifically as regards the religion and national values curriculum. He said the subject's civil education, social studies, Christian religious knowledge, Islamic studies and security education under the religion and national values curriculum are distinct and taught separately on the timetable. According to the Minister of Education, Adamo Adamo, the Federal Executive Council has approved the hosting of ministerial retreats, which aims at reviewing education roadmap to end crisis in the education sector. The retreat is to take place in July 2017. Professor Larry, I know the National Librarian has said that Nigeria is not rated among the most reading countries in the world. I know who is also the Chief Executive Officer, National Library of Nigeria, said this in Enugu at the Readership Promotion Campaign. He said that a recent study on the most reading countries in the world showed that Nigeria was not mentioned in the ranking, while Egypt and South Africa were among the first 30 countries rated. According to him, leading world nations pride themselves on their promotion of reading and they see a high level of literacy as a major source of their competitiveness and social maturity. I know explained that the absence of a widespread culture of reading in Nigeria acts as an effective barrier to the development and international competitiveness of the country. Hence, he appealed to teachers to encourage pupils and students to read and urged parents to make books available to their children. According to a report released by the UN Department of Economic and Social Affairs, Nigeria is projected to be the world's third most populous country by the year 2050. The report titled World Population Prospects, the 2017 revision, said with such development, Nigeria will overtake the United States in terms of population, just as world population would reach 9.8 billion people. The report said by 2050, the third most populous country will be Nigeria, which currently ranks seventh and which is poised to replace the United States. It pointed out that among the 10 largest countries of the world, one is in Africa, that is Nigeria, and Nigeria's population is growing the most rapidly. Consequently, according to the report, the population of Nigeria is projected to surpass that of the United States shortly before 2050, at which point it would become the third largest country in the world. And so that's it on the news as brought to you by the Anglican Cable Network Nigeria, ACNN. Thank you very much for watching. I am Ngozi Adibe. God bless you.